And a warm welcome to Athens for the 79th Tour of Italy. I'm Phil Liggett, as always, lovely to have you along. 1996, a special year on the Italian racing calendar as their great tour moves across to Greece for its start. And the reason? Well, the centenary of the modern Olympiad, first held in Athens in 1896. A country famed for its ancient buildings and the Acropolis, and now for the start of the Tour of Italy. And there are 162 riders based on 18 teams. This first stage of 170 kilometers is a circuit based on Athens. No real challenge for the climbers today. Those, of course, will come later, where there are major mountains on nine stages of this tour. In all, the race totaling 4,000 kilometers. There's the high altitude at the left of our picture, a mere 280 meters today for the field as they prepare to roll away. Everybody, in fact, talking about Abraham Alano after his second place in the Tour of Spain last year and of course his world championship as the man to beat. There's one man who might contest it in the little blue cap there, Evgeny Berzin, who won this race in 1994 and will be a real favourite in the upcoming Tour de France as well. A breakaway forming today and three riders of the same team have gone clear here. There are Aki Men, Andrea Teteriuk of Kazakhstan and the two Italians Gianluca Garini and Denis Zanetta. Taking advantage of a lot of crashes already in the race today and it's the lead of a minute and 50 seconds over the complete field. Well, not quite, because here is a crash here. We're showing it in slow motion. It's just happened, in fact. It's caused by a burst water main. You can see the wet roads and the riders try to get away. The rider lying down on the right is Marcel Wust in the red. And what bad luck this rider has. It looks to me as though Marcel is out of the race. He also abandoned the tour after a crash in the first tour he rode back in 1992 and was the double stage winner in the Tour du Pont a couple of weeks ago and was bang on form that really is bad luck for the young man there from the MX on the team the German rider always a jolly rider as well and this breakaway here they want to know a little bit more about what's going on but the field are closing in the rider shouting at us here is a Denise Zanetta and this is a trip to the back of the field here because the rider taking a bit of service here, Massimo Stratza. Also a crash victim and he's hardly back with the race, there's another one. Well they're saying a number of the accidents are caused by the bad roads but you have to say looking at this picture here, these roads don't look too bad at all. A touch of wheels, a moment's inattention, first day nerves perhaps. But again, more riders are on the ground and it looks as though more riders out of the race. Already, uh, three riders have officially abandoned because of the crashes. Now it looks as though Secchiari is another man and that's going to make it four riders out of the tour on the very first stage here in Greece. 
The field have all been swept up. It's going to be a sprinter's chance again. And this is Uchikov. He was, in fact, just ahead of the field. But they're being brought to heel right on the line. And Uchikov, a former stage winner in the Tour of France, is caught. And now the sprinters are going to go. The sprinters opening up for the line now. The game is right. It's Stefano Zanini. But he's been swept aside now as Roslotto starts on the far right. But look at Martinello. Martinello, without his big sprinter, Cipollini, is going to have a go on the left of the picture. Martinello, the double world champion on the track in Colombia a year ago he's going to get his victory in the Tour of Italy and that means he will also be the first wearer of the Maglia Rosa and that is what every rider wants and this is how he did it I must say a tremendous show of power here from Martinello he must have been given a bit of a clean hand from his team leader today uh, Cipollini who wasn't in the result at all Martinello winning over Fabrizio Guidi and Stefano Zanini Zbigniew Sprock so Martinello the first leader of the Giro d'Italia and thanks to the bonuses out on the course Martinello is four seconds in front of Guidi and Contrini is in third place now we're moving on to stage two this is the beautiful fishing town here of Navpatkos and this is the finishing town of stage number two the ride today some 230 plus kilometers the ride is coming away from Elfsina and there are 157 of them left, having lost a number of riders yesterday in all of those crashes. No challenge except the climb in the middle, which is over 2,400 feet, 880 meters. But the rides themselves not rising to the challenge at all today. The race has hardly turned a pedal in anger as we pick up the action now five kilometers from the finish. The Gavis team here trying to set up the sprint for their man, Stefano Zanini, to see if he can take over the Maglia Rosa uh, from Silvio Martinello and by the way Martinello has said overnight that in fact Mario Cipollini his team leader gave him a free hand yesterday to win the stage because Cipollini was not feeling too good at all now look at the rush here now by virtually the whole of the gay Viz team here to try and get Zanini into pink and there's plenty of riders willing to to bring other teams up we can see down there the team of Amora Evita they've got a very good sprinter on that team Glenn Magnuson if you saw the Tour du Pont you may remember he was riding exceptionally well there first year pro champion of Sweden and now again Polti trying to lead out their sprinter who is Giovanni Lombardi who four years ago in the Olympic Games in Barcelona picked up the points title but he's not going to get onto the back wheel it doesn't look like the lead out man here and there's the blue jersey of Stefano Zanini and Zanini has been beaten on the line and the man who's got through there let's look at it again is Glenn Magnuson who had a perfect lead out right into the center of our picture and that is going to put him right on the wanted list for Sweden for the Olympic Games for sure his first win as a pro is a great sprinter and today Day was his day, right? Yeah, yeah. I normally I, I'm quite good in sprint, so I feel I had. Uh, I always feel when I come to the finish line, I have a good chance, and uh, I, I took the chance today. Indeed, he did. Everybody finishing the same time. Zanini second, and having to be content with the runner-up spots at the moment. Edo of Spain, the little sprinter there, he got third. And overall, Martinello keeps the pink jersey. Four seconds still his advantage over Zanini. Six now over Magnussen. And all of the riders on top of the leaderboard, not surprisingly perhaps regarded as sprinters here, but today's a bit hilly. The last stage in Greece, 194 riders. The riders going from Masalonghi to Yanina. And there have been a number of skirmishes today, but basically the hot weather has caused the majority of the riders to be brought back into the fold. There's Martinello in the pink jersey. Cipollini feeling a little bit better perhaps, now taking closer order near the front. The green jersey here, led by the early King of the Mountains leader, Fabio Fontinelli, and their confirmation of a break, two minutes, seven seconds up. Here they are, Nicola Michelli in the front, and Daniel Contrini of the Brescia team. He's with him as well. Contrini, a new pro, and 25-year-old Michele from Sella Italia. But the majority of the hills all coming in the last 60 kilometers, 38 miles of the race. So there's uh, Angel Camargo, the Colombian on the Sella Italia team, trying to grab an express train because they're bringing back his leader, leader on the day at least, and the field behind keeping very close order as well. It could well go down to a bunch sprint once again here if they can get over these hills. Martinello paying particular attention to the fact that uh, on a day when he was expected to lose his overall lead he might well hang on to it but there we see coming back Contrini from Basiliad so he's back in the fold and Mikula isn't going to be far behind him here is Mikuli 
and there is the main field closing in very rapidly indeed a brave attempt indeed a lot of publicity but that's about where it ends today for him the field are now beginning to warm up for King of the Mountain points. Fontinelli in third place. Looks like an attack too going by the good old favourite from Italy, Claudio Chiapucci. He's always had a great love affair with the Tour of Italy, but he's still waiting for the big day to arrive. Perhaps having an early shot at leading the King of the Mountains here, Claudio Chiapucci, the steepest climb of the race so far on day three of the Tour. Remember, tonight it's off to the mainland of Italy and then they say the racing will really commence. Fourth in the Tour of Italy last year, but he is a regular in the top six these past years. Trying to find his rhythm a little bit, keeping the big chain wheel rolling on what is a very good main road climb and maximum points going to go to Claudio Chiapucci here as he gets under the banner he's being chased all the way to the line though by one more rider can't quite get onto him so I wonder if Claudio Chiapucci is going to be a big part of this year's race Sergei Uzlamin 111th overall now putting in a determined attack but he's done it with 12 kilometers to go on a long straight road it's not ideal conditions to go clear of the field and there's a lot of riders in this race now feeling that it will go down to a bunch sprint there's a small climb up to the finish of a kilometer but it's not really a tough climb for these riders and in fact Uzlamin has been joined now by David Castellotto of Scrigno so it's now down to the teams behind to start chasing the gap is just 16 seconds and it's not that far to go and again the Palti team trying to bring the race back and as we switch now Gay Riz too remember that Stefano Zanini is still looking for the stage win and time is running out if this man wants to be the overall leader of the Tour of Italy there he is in the mauve jersey and coming up to his shoulder now the pink jersey of race leader Martinello and Silvio Martinello, he really has sharpened his legs for this race. The kilometre up to the finish now. A little bit of a drag, but he hasn't done too much damage to the strong men now. As Palti again tried to get Lombardi to the front. Lombardi is tucked in about third place. He's now trying to come through, but also there is Stefano Zanini. Zanini is in a great position now. He's had a third and a second so far. Zanini on the left. Zanini comes through. It looks like he's got the victory now. He's being challenged by Lombardi to the line. It's a long, long way, slightly uphill here, and I think Zanini he's going to lose it he struggled to the line and he's eased too soon in fact as Giovanni Lombardi watch this Lombardi it just seems though Zanini seized up as he approached the line shoulder to shoulder as Giovanni Lombardi takes him right on the line gets the victory Martinello gets third this is going to be quite a shuffling of the overall classification but the victory goes here to Giovanni Lombardi the sprinters are really having their day so far for the first three days here in Greece all going down to sprinters after Martinello and Magnussen we've now got Lombardi and what about Zanini two seconds and a third place to his credit now so there's the result Lombardi the winner almost five hours in the saddle today in the end of bunch sprint Zanini gets second as a result Zanini the new leader of the Giro d'Italia same time as Martinello though, split on points as we move on now to stage number four and this 147 kilometers the rest day has passed by many of them traveling a nine-hour boat journey from Greece across to Italy the rides of course coming by airplane straight after the previous stage now rolling out to do four laps of what was partially the world championship circuit here in Ostuni back in 1976 and the Gaywiz riders out for a day of protection perhaps because Stefano Zanini after two second places and a third place is the leader of the tour on the same time as Silvia Martinello and as expected a lot of attacks have come to nothing today as the riders have whipped ripped around this circuit into the last kilometer nobody has succeeded in going away we have seen people like Berzin and Ugrimov attack but they've all come back into the fold and a late attack here now and it looks as though it's coming from Mario Mazzoni of the Roslotto team trying to finish off with a result for them but they're gonna leave it late and they're winding up now it looks to me as though Cipollini might be finding his legs too he's got the wheel of his teammate Martinello in that mode 
of Jersey, Cipollina Martinella, the two Sayoko riders are coming right up to the line together and this time Cipo gets it. Mario Cipollini, that's his first stage win of this year's tour and in all his 13th stage win of the Giro d'Italia since he started riding it back in 1990. That's how he did it and when he does come to the line first he does make it look so easy. Cipollini beating Martinello, his teammate Guidi taking third place and overall now it is Silvio Martinello who reclaims the Maya Rosa and so be it, there's still not much time in it. And so this opening week still staying the domain of the sprinters and the pink jersey going back rather surprisingly perhaps to Silvio Martinello. We're now heading out onto stage number 5, 193 kilometres. We continue through this beautiful country which is steeped in Roman remains. Capo Colana as the riders now head away from Metaponto down to Cotoni running down the in effect the instep of the heel of Italy as the race continues its journey towards the southwest of the country. You can't get it much flatter than that, can you? And this man should enjoy his day. Gianni Bugno, the champion of Italy, yet to feature in this year's Giro d'Italia. I wonder how long he's going to stay quiet. The race itself throughout the day has been a quiet one, just on five hours of racing, the whole field now swinging in towards the finish, not surprisingly of course with the flat stage like it was, and again a chance now for Martinello to increase his overall lead. He's had a good day in the sprints out on the course, he's increased his overall lead slightly over Stefano Zanini and now he's got a chance of victory here he's number three in line as once again Gay is looking over there to see where Zanini is to try and help him out of it but Giovanni Lombardi now licking his lips once more after a stage win he's right there at the front as well and this is going to be a battle royale because there you have Lombardi on the left of our picture and going for gold now as he's got Martinello on his wheel and behind Martinello is little Kelme rider Ange Ido Ido going off to the left it looks as though Ido might land this one the little Spanish sprinter hits the line Edo gets it and he finishes just in front of Massimo Strazza but here's the hero of the day riding behind look at that right arm just propped up on the handlebar and this rider is Gianluca Bortolami a suspected broken right elbow after a crash midway through the stage what courage he's continued to the finish but he's out of the tour and for this man the other end of the spectrum the happiest day for Angel Ido he gets the best ever vague stage victory of his career and indeed his first for two years ahead of Strazza and Martinello overall no change Martinello now 16 seconds ahead of Stefano Zanini as we move on to stage number six and this one is 179 kilometers, the biggest climb so far, officially a mountain day. And look at this, the biggest climb at 1,426 meters, approximately midway through the race. That's all behind us now as we join the action here at Taverna with just on 60 kilometers left to go to the finish. There's been plenty of attacking, but at the moment the race is more or less under control with the rider in the pink jersey still Silvio Martinello. So despite the mountains, a man that doesn't like the mountains, a double world track champion, is still in with a shout today of retaining that pink leader's jersey. Paneria, with the full list of riders, all nine of them, it looks as though they've got them at the front here, trying to reel in the breakaway. Zibinia Spruk is the man at the head, setting the space, setting the pace here. Little uh, Belly also tucked in nicely. And now we're looking here at the breakaway, Denis Zanetti. The rider has not given up at trying to get away. He's, got his, he's really at his strongest on the climbs. And the Aki rider pushing on the pace here. The small climbs towards the finish, but they're absolutely ideal for springboards. And there is, by the way, a rather nasty little climb up to the finishing line itself. And a counter-attack here coming from Bo Larson. And he's being followed too by Sergei Uchikov. And the third rider there looks like it's Gabriella Messaglia. The Italians always anxious to get into the thick of the action. There's the confirmation of the group of Bo Larson. Another new professional from the strong Danish setup. Klaus Moller also rides here in the Giro d'Italia, part of the famous Danish World Championship amateur team of a couple of years ago. All finding the way through the pro ranks now. And slowly but surely the whole field is regrouped here. Still they're searching a way to crack this field. Another three riders trying to pull away. A little rider there, Fabrizio Bontempi in the blue jersey. 
No relation, by the way, to the now-retired Guido Bontempi, as this little group also tries to pull away from the field. Bontempi still itching to get his hands on the Maglia Rosa before time runs out for him. The rider tucked in at the back there is on Castillo Gonzalez, the Colombian climber. So he knows his course well because this could suit him, but there are still plenty of counter-attacks. They're all together. That, I think, was Roberto Petito, who's just gone clear. And another very strong attack. So Saiko launching a number of attacks here. It is Petito, but he's got a long climb up to the finish. But you've got to have a go. And Petito is going to have to really struggle now to keep his rhythm in and out of the saddle. There's no more relaxing all the way up to the finishing climb. Three more riders trying to open a little bit of a gap at the back of the field. But they too looking over the shoulders and not too certain of what is going on. Petito worried he knows the gap is virtually nil but he can't catch uh, sight of the peloton because they're around the bends on this twisting climb up to the finish we can have a look though and there's one rider coming at him and the way he's dancing on those pedals is the little Frenchman Pascal Hervé from Festina who's trying to get across and just look at the gap opening now the pink jersey is cracked on the long climb he has no liking for the mountains and those a few seconds lead overall are sailing in the wind now and this man is flying in it because Pascal Hervé is heading up towards the back wheel of Petito. Petito, don't look over his shoulder now because Hervé, the rider who won a stage of the Tour du Pont at Beach Mountain and that climb is a little bit steeper than this one I think in the United States but Pascal Hervé having his best ever season and so Hervé got the side to Petito, he's still got the time, there's the kilometre banner to come. Now if he times it to absolute perfection he should catch up with the lead about 500 metres out and then maybe to go by him straight away before Petito can get on his wheel. Huge crowds we approach the line now but time beginning to run out as well for Pascal Hervé as the counter moves coming from the field. There's not a lot of time gap spread right across the field now. We're only looking at something like a 12 to 15 seconds from the main field up to Petito. So Hervé is living a very fragile lifestyle in between the two as he continues his rhythm up the climb. Kicks again. He must be very, very close now to Petito. He knows the pink jersey could wait for him at the top because he may not know it but could suspect it that the overall leader of the tour, Martinello, is now in big trouble. And he's got him, he's got him and he's got him only a few hundred metres from the line, a big kick from Petito and Petito may have the strength, Petito, no he's gone, Petito made the big effort and realised that Pascal Hervé was not going to slow down and Hervé now sprinting to a clear victory and only the clock will decide whether he gets the Maglia Rosa, but there's no doubt about the stage victory in the continuing great season of Pascal Hervé. The man who finished second overall, a clear second overall behind Lance Armstrong in the Tour du Pont, continues his good form here in the Tour of Italy. Victory for the Frenchman, Pascal Hervé. The time will soon tell us whether or not he gets the overall leader's jersey. Here's the sprint now for third place, and it looks as though Casa Grande gets it, so a little bit of appearance there by one of the pre-race favourites, Francesco Casa Grande. He comes home in third place, and there is the pink jersey of Martinello, losing time today so Pascal Hervé on the podium he's just been told as well yes he is the new leader by six seconds over Guidi in the Giro d'Italia the first ever pink jersey for him and third place overall Petito who finished second on this stage and the 31 years old Pascal Hervé of France is going to feel very fragile again today because only 24 seconds cover the top 10 riders in the overall classification as we now head on stage 7 of 164 kilometres to the mountain top finish of Monte Serino. High up in the Sela Mountains, it's a ski station, it climbs up to 1,546 metres and as you can see the weather conditions up there are a little bit grim. This man has been the hero of the day, Maurizio Di Pasquale, he's had a leader 14 minutes but now it looks as though the field is starting to wind him in he's down to seven minutes as we head up towards the final climb of the day the peloton is more or less together the Festina team have had a tough day though they've been trying desperately to control this race and they've wasted a lot of energy there's the leader Pascal Hervé turned professional very late in his career but he's making up for it now he's having a marvelous season 
Well, the course should suit him, but there are so many places for attacks to come from with so many small tying gaps, uh, even the climbers included, all around him. The steady climb now, this is the finishing climb, it goes on and on quite literally. They've wiped out, in fact, Di Pasquale caught eight kilometres from the summit. And now it's a free-for-all here with a constant number of counter-attacks coming all of the time. Very prominent at the front too, the Palti riders are up here too. And this perhaps the most important attack of the Giro so far without the pink jersey because they've got Tonkov, Ugrimov, Berzin, Rebelin are all up here. There's Ugrimov in the centre of our picture. He's sporting his new colours of Ross Lotto. Making his climb steady but no sign at all of Hervé. So they've worked him over good and proper on the climb today. His teammates have also dropped away from the picture. And little David Rebelin here digging very, very deep indeed as he comes up towards the line. He started the sprint very quickly. Faustini has gone away and also coming up at the back is Pavel Tonkov, the other Russian rider. So Tonkov in third place and in fact getting second as Rebelin takes the stage. So David Rebelin, a new man on the block, gets the stage victory. And he was sixth, remember, in Liège, Baston Liège this, this year. And judging by the enormous gaps, there's still no sign of Hervé. There's Berzin, he's also conceded time. He comes over the line and there is the exhausted David Rebelin of Polti. Only four and a half hours the stage today, but it's been a tough one, just over 100 miles. He's being congratulated because he is the new leader of the Giro d'Italia. And this is how the little climber did it. Those rather thin-looking legs finding a lot of power in the sprint at the top of Monte Serino. And dropping away from the action, slowly but surely, Faustini. And coming up on him, Pavel Tonkov. The Russian rider who once won a stage of the British milk race in pouring rain in the city of Nottingham. Rebelling gets the stage. And now how about this? Look at the time gap. 11 minutes and 4 seconds and counting. The champion of Italy, Gianni Bugno, certainly out of any high finish in this year's Giro d'Italia. Happy days though for David Rebelin, he becomes the new leader of the Giro, his overall lead will be 4 seconds over Pavel Tonkov and Faustini will be 3rd, 8 seconds back, Leonardo Pipoli, he's a good climber, up to 4th and Ugramov now in the frame in 5th. And with no more mountains until tomorrow, the race now heading for Naples, one of Italy's most famous cities, in beautiful conditions, and it should be a day for the sprinters. This stage of 135 kilometres, we're now running up the coast of the Mediterranean as we head up to Naples via Pompey. There you are, look, it's all downhill today, just a small mountain at the start, and the riders have gone over that, and they're all very, very much together. New race leader, David Rebelin, stalking the field here, letting everybody know he's around. He comes up to the shoulder there of Claudio Chiapucci on the far side. The race favourite, perhaps, Evgeny Berzin, along with Abraham Olano. We can move on to the action now, and a breakaway has formed, and in this breakaway is Claudio Chiapucci, the rider who has always dreamed one day of wearing the Maglia Rosa. Well, he might do something about it. He's in this breakaway, Marco Salagari, and the other rider is Andrea Noe, number eight. And the gap is growing overnight, 1 minute 11 seconds, the gap between Chiapucci and Rebelan. And look at that, 1 minute 20 seconds. So he's got the overall lead on the road and that might keep him going. Just 13 kilometres left to go to the finish. I'm not surprised, in fact, that uh, Chiapucci is driving the race. But coming up from the back here is Marco Malesi. And a little glance over the shoulder there by Noe. We'll see Malese join them. But in fact, the main field are closing in. There's the same Archie's luck. And they're very, very close together indeed. So, I think dreams of pink are out, but there's still a chance of the stage win. There's now four riders up front. Malaysia is tagged on to the back of them. So we've got Marco Saligari, Giapucci, Andrea Noe and Marco Malesi. Massive crowds here as we race into Naples for the finish, but the field are not that far behind. In fact, you can see them. Look, there they are. As the attacks, the last gasp attacks begin now, but I don't think there's any hope at all because the field are thundering down the street here towards the finish. This is going to be another day when the sprinters feel they've got to have it, and that's why the Amore Vita team are working so hard. They're trying to set up Glenn Magnusson, who won, remember, the second stage of this race when we were over in Greece at Napakos. But the field gathering again at the front. They're virtually wiping out of the breakaway. In fact, they've wiped them out now because this is Seiko at the front. 
And they're looking to their two top sprinters. Martinello's in there in the mauve jersey, but also there, the tall man, the fastest self-proclaimed sprinter in the world. He's right on the inside of our picture, Mario Cipollini. He's looking for his second stage win. He says, I only come here to win stages. If I can't win them, there's no point in staying. Racing down the front here now in Naples. He's running in third place at the moment. He's on the wheel of Silvio Martinello. Martinello, twice the wearer of the Maggi Rosa on separate occasions in this tour. Now racing for the time bonuses once more to the line. There's still a battle for seconds among the sprinters here now as they start to go. In fact, uh, Angle has sat up and looked at his gears if he's got a problem and gone away from it. But Cipollini has no such problems. Martinello on the barriers, Cipollini on the left, Cipollini gets it. I think even our cameraman was full there because he closed the camera in on Martinello. But in fact, it was the teammate of Martinello and the Saeco captain right on the right of our picture as we look down here who wins the stage, Mario Cipollini. A lot of speed off big Mario gets it his second stage win of this year's Giro and right behind him was Guidi Lombardi Martinello I think will be confirmed in fourth place this rider once he hits the front there's no getting round him at all he makes Lombardi look oh so slow and for him his second stage victory of the Giro d'Italia and that is what he came here for and what he does best but overall, there is no change at all. That's the stage result. Cipollini ahead of the sprinters today. Abdu Japarov getting there this time in fifth place. And Baffe in sixth. Overall, Rebelin keeps his four seconds lead over Tonkov and eight seconds over Faustini. So it still remains very close to the top and a few more hills today as we go on to stage number nine. Heading away from Naples now, we go north up the coast of the Mediterranean. Then we turn inland, skirting Rome and heading to the finish here at Fugi, a total distance of 184 kilometres. A nervous day indeed for young David Rebelin. He looks a solid leader so far and he's got some good riders on the Palti team, uh, quite capable of riding strongly in the mountains with him. One climb in the middle for the King of the Mountains, the Intergiro, coming at just about 19 kilometers and then it's all go for the finish and the breakaway of the day two young professional riders Contrini and Traversoni trying to soften up the rest of the field and grab a little bit of the limelight it's been a long breakaway for these riders but the counter attacks are coming now not uh, surprisingly from the Aki team who are taking a lot of encouragement from the fine riding from Denis Sinetta. Konichev setting the pace, Mauro Betin and Roberto Petito, the rider who finished second to Pascal Hervé on stage six. He's sitting now at the back of the group, maybe he'll get more luck this time because here comes the main field. Still a little bit of hesitation here as they try to organize the counter-attack. The Panaria team looking particularly good as they put three or four riders back at the front of this group the whole field having wiped out the rest of the breakaways are all together down there now. And the motorcycles at the front waiting for the attack that might decide at the day stage. They climb up now towards the finish at Fugi. And this looks like Enrico Zaina who's starting to go clear the field. A counter-attack coming from Paneria. Carrera without, of course, Marco Pantani who incidentally did the opening titles to the international television coverage. He was actually singing at the top of every day's programme of this year's Tour of Italy. And I can tell you, we want to see him back racing because he's not a very good singer. Well, this is still Zaina trying to get clear of the field, but they're, they're really wrestling with the fact they're not going to let him go. And it looks as though there's a counter move here coming from Alexander Gonchenkov, the Russian rider. Well, he must know these roads quite well. He finished second in Terano Adriatico here this year. He's also had a stage victory in the Tour of Romandy, so Gonchenkov having a great season. He's a man that is promising much and he's just starting to deliver this year now. And this is Belly coming across from the Panaria team. Now, if those three can get together, we have a real substance of a good breakaway. Oh, and look at this. Gonchenkov has just come across to Zaina and he's got a flat back tyre. Well, that's bad news, not just for Gonchenkov, but I think also for Zaina, because the main field are around about 30 seconds behind. Here they are. Not quite as many as there were at the start of the climb, but even so, a very, very big pack indeed. David Rebelin is in this group and will feel a little bit concerned about Zaina, who started the day just 29 seconds behind overall. He's got more than that back at the minute. So Zaina is the race leader on the road. The Festinas are also launching a counter-attack. This is Akuna Lauka from Festina. 
and Gonchenkov had no option really because the gap wasn't big enough. He surrendered to go back into the field and that really is bad luck, leaving Zaina now with a very slim hope of surviving to the end. He usually manages a stage win in the Giro d'Italia at some point. He got one last year, Il Coccio. And he's still got three kilometers to hang out off the front of this group. I don't think there's any chance in taking over the pink because the gap is coming down. And really the stage win is all he can hope for. The counter-attack's coming from the group once again. Surprisingly not from the Palti riders and that must indicate that perhaps David Rebelin has had a tough day today controlling this race. And he's got to be worried about Zaina. Zaina now can think only of victory and then the clock will tell us whether he's in the pink or not and I doubt that. Camera waiting to see if anybody comes round this corner so the gap must be pretty close down to being shut down altogether and here is the second rider on the course and this is uh, Guidi who's gone through for the Scrigno team. Then the main pack just behind Fabrizio Guidi who continues to progress in this year's Giro d'Italia and keeps a high overalls position and look at the way they've closed in on everybody. And in fact, Zaina is just about going to hang on to the finish, but it's going to be touch and go. He'll get his stage win. He was seventh overall in last year's Giro, by the way. But now as he comes up to the line, a stage win will be his for sure. But I don't think there'll be a pink jersey. 29 seconds out. He gets a 12-second bonus for the victory. And the gap is closing all of the time behind. The pink jersey Rebelan now at the front of that group, trying to reduce the gap as much as possible. He won't get a bonus, though, as he gets pushed away into the pack. Berzin trying to get in on the action. That little blue jersey there. And Guidi again chasing. And Zaina gets the stage victory. And a very good average speed for the day of nearly 42 kilometers an hour. Behind comes uh, Guidi. He gets the second place four seconds back officially. Zubin Yesbrook from Panaria. He takes the third place. And David Rebelin, he actually finishes with that pink jersey in fourth place. What would have happened though to Zaina if Gonchenkov had not punctured? He may well have got his hands on this jersey, which stays on the shoulders of David Rebelin. I'm not surprised he's smiling. The 24 year old who turned pro at 20. 20 years of age. He still leads by four seconds over Tonkov, eight seconds Faustini. Zaina now up into fourth place. The ride is now facing the tenth stage as we head out of Arezzo and head for Prato. And we're heading now into northern Italy, into Tuscany. The region uh, famous for its famous son, Mario Cipollini, but he may not like the route today because it is a little bit hilly and it's going to be a tough one for the sprinters to control. Still in that pink jersey, David Rebelin, and each day he's finding his team is under pressure. There's the hills, uh, one coming uh, sort of midway through the stage, and a nasty little climb around Prato. We go through Prato, in fact, and then out onto a, a little hill the riders referring to as the wall, and then we go back down to the finish in Prato itself. Beautiful scenery here, plenty of rain in northern Italy, but the sun is out today and the grass uh, very lush indeed. And it has been a good attacking day throughout the stage. This is the little leading group led here by Marco Della Vedova, who's trying to get a sortie underway and a good lead at the moment over the field. This is where we are at Veta Le Crocchi and 67 kilometers still remain. Also in this group, we've got Dmitry Konishev. Steady climbing here being done, and the gap, well, it's going to be a little bit of a risk as to whether they will survive the whole escape. There's nobody that will affect the overall lead yet of David Rebelan, who's going to take his time in bringing back this group, I think. And the Amore Vita rider there is Ricardo Focconi. Only a small team, Amore Vita, but they do manage to get into the frame in every tour of Italy with one rider or another. They've had a stage win, got them off to a good start with Glenn Magnusson, who had a long breakaway earlier on by Maurizio Di Pasquale. The gap is now 2 minutes and 45 seconds. The main field still taking things quite easy. They'll probably wait for the first passage through Prato before trying to pick up the leaders. Here comes Adela Vadova. One or two of the other names in the breakaway. Watch out for Piccoli. The Casa Grande, by the way, is not Francesco, but Filippo, his younger brother. And Vadova, <laughs> even managing to find himself a little smile here as he makes his way up the climb. No thanks to the drink. 
Riders very rarely take the offer of drinks from the crowd because you never know, there's always the risk of picking up a little bit of contaminated water. They only like to take the drinks supplied directly to them from their director sportifs. And the pink jersey, and not surprisingly, all of the Palti team now trying to control the escapes. They're closing in at 45 kilometers to go. Here's the back view of the breakaway as they concentrate on the, sw the small Intergiro sprint for a handful of time bonuses. But the main field now heading towards the completion of the first visit to the uh, finish town here at Prato in Tuscany. And then the riders will head out onto the big climb. And on this big climb it is a little bit of a brute. I think we should see the counter-attacks. Now onto the climb itself and the Aki riders getting themselves into the thick of the action again. They've had a good tour so far. Denis Zanet is the man who has been doing much of the work for them. The 25 year old who turned pro only last year. And the gap tumbling down now. Abraham Alana, the world champion. We haven't seen too much of him yet riding on the right of our picture in his world championship jersey right on the wheel there of the leader of the tour. Now you get some idea of the gradient as they grind around this corner. It looks to me as though it's something like 25% on that bend. Panaria, thinking perhaps of Pavel Tonkov, they're setting the pace at the front. Good chance to test out the strong men in this year's Giro d'Italia as the big heads of state get themselves to the front. Panaria are riding very, very strongly as a team. There's the climb, sticking off to our right. Shinyano, and this is the man who's now in the lead here, and this is Alexander Gonchenkov who's got himself to the front, so they've wiped out the breakaway. And Gonchenkov, the rider who punctured yesterday when he had a real shot at the win with Zanini, or Zanina rather, and now in the lead. A little group starting to get clear. This race is split wide open and heading the charge there, the world champion Abraham Olano, there he is down there. Setting the pace, it looks as though we may well have the other Roslotto star right on his wheel. And that's Pyotr Ugramov. The pink jersey's done well to latch on the back. Alano Ugramov, this is Pascal Hervé. So there's some good riders got themselves to the front today. A little bit of a sort out amongst the senior citizens, I think. Pascal Hervé, who briefly held the lead, and I thought he would have held the lead for quite a few days. He found the going just that little bit too tough. Number 14 is Stefano Faustini, the other star of the Aki team. He's tagged onto the back. He's on the wheel of Claudio Chiapucci. This is a nice little select group here, trying to grab a few seconds on the day. As he comes up towards the finish though, one rider slipped them, and he's from the group into the last kilometer. It looks as though it might be Massey of the refing team. Rodolfo Massey, well if he wins this it'll be a surprise, he's been a pro for the best part of 10 years, he's just hanging off the front of what is a select breakaway group, most of the favourites are in it, but Rodolfo Massey, Massey taking advantage perhaps of the infighting, coming up to the line now, he will get the stage win, almost certainly the finest win of his career, as the sprint starts behind now. But it looks as though as Aina's in on the sprint too, Gonchenkov, Afara's in, they're all here. Giorgio Furlan is getting himself up to the front. Alongside him too is Claudio Chiapucci and Casagrande. Very close indeed as Massey takes the victory a few seconds in front. I think Furlan got it. This is the overall situation after that sprint. Rebelan, Tonkov, Faustini, no change at all overall. Furlan did get the sprint and Casagrande got third. Chiapucci was fourth. No change though. In in the overall classification and so the riders now are turning back towards the coast as we leave Prato and head out to Marina di Massa and there is a day for the sprinters if I've ever seen one there's just one small climb towards the end and the pack as always coming down together enjoying a very hot day here on the west coast of northern Italy and after a long, long breakaway by Fabiano Fontanelli, the race has come all back together again. Fontanelli, by the way, the king of the mountain since this race started in Athens. His lead wiped out approaching the finish. And now we have just a bunch sprint. And now can Mario Cipollini take his third stage win of the tour? He will think he can. He's tucked right in on the inside of the barriers here. And in fact, Cipollini now moving slightly off the barriers. Martinello is in fourth or fifth place trying to find his way through. But it's all too late. His team captain gets 
his third stage win of the Giro d'Italia. So, Mario Cipollini, when he goes, he really does go. This is third stage win of the Giro and a clear win indeed he comes right ahead here on the line of the little demon sprinter going through on the inside of the barriers there Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov and Silvio Martinello just about hangs on there to third place uh, Denis Zanetta of Aki was the rider in the yellow who got wiped out and pushed back into fourth but Mario Cipollini gets stage win number three ahead of Abdu Japarov and Martinello David Rebelin, well, an untroubled day once he brought back uh, Fontanelli, and so he keeps the leader's pink jersey by that same four seconds over Tonkov, and once again, no change at all overall. So the sun continues, and without a view like this, well, it wouldn't be Italy, would it? As everybody enjoys the sea here, and the warm sunshine and has fun, but the Tour of Italy and the professional bike riders, they have to continue their journey now, which is heading towards France. The riders taking them from Ula to Loano, 195 kilometres, right around the coast. Just one little climb soon after the start, and then a nice view of the sea all the way through to the finish. We're picking up the race here at 38 kilometres to go, and the breakaway in fact in progress which started after only the second kilometer today Fabrizio Guidi started the break he was joined by Fabiano Fontanelli and uh, we've got uh, Denis Zanetta here Gabriella Misalia that's the rider looking for some more action here and trying to draw the best out of them because the breakaway has dropped Bruno Boscard in and the other rider of the five here is David Casarotto the gap at one stage when they went through Genoa was 11 and a half minutes so that gave them the leadership on the road uh, and indeed a number of the high placings in the overall classification but it's come tumbling down a bit now and in fact it's leaving uh, a fairly pleasant day for the race leader because he seems to have the race under control it's all a question of who will win the stage Fontenelle remember yesterday had the misfortune to flat uh, just before the finish when he would have won the stage today he has another shot at it now the Saiko boys and Scrigno working hard at the front of the group but this will decide the day and a breakaway which has lasted for much of the 195 kilometers and Zanetta there tightening up his toe straps are probably bolting down his shoes these days as he rides second from the end getting ready for the sprint but also in this group the man who started the whole breakaway what a powerhouse Fabrizio Guidi who has been taking part in the sprints for most of this race now had a go today at the long one and the attacks now as they start to dice for the position at the front. Fontanelli in that green King of the Mountains jersey is watching everything. Misaglia is the rider at the back for Panaria. Zanet is number 19. Casarotto is the Scrigno rider. And it looks as though Fontanelli's got himself in a nice position. Followed now by Casarotto, who gets a, a good uh, look at from Fontanelli, who wants somebody to take up the counter-attack there by Guidi. And in fact, the whole field have closed right in behind them, so this really is a battle of nerves now. They've come right out of the blue at 500 metres to go, and they're going to have to hang on just to start the sprint. Fontanelli at the back there, also looking over his shoulder there is Massalia. And the Panaria boys are working very hard at the front of this group, but the main field are closing right in, and they, will they catch them right on the line here? Because it looks as though, indeed, that uh, uh, Casarotto is the rider who's setting the pace and is giving it all away by just keeping a top five finish for him. Fontanelli has waited as long as possible, and Fontanelli goes for the line now. He really gives it just about everything. Thinking of his flat tie yesterday, perhaps uh, uh, Missalia is the other rider right on his shoulder, but Fontanelli gets it. He takes it on the line. Missalia will be second. Guidi will be third. And that means Zanetto, just of our picture to the right in yellow, he gets that fourth place. But the King of the Mountains gets the stage victory here. What a great season Fontanelli is having. That will be his seventh win of the season. So Fontinelli finishing ahead of Massalia, Guidi, Zanetta, Casarotto, the main field coming in just three seconds behind the top four today. Overall, no change at all. And it's as you were, right down into the top eight positions.
And on this stage, I think David Rebelan is going to be tested for the full. It is only the second mountaintop finish we've had so far of this year's tour. We're heading to Pratinovozo, and no, there's no snow there. That little bit of publicity is what uh, you would see if you came here in the winter. It's a ski resort, and it comes at the end of 115 kilometres today, a climb of 1,615 metres, and there's plenty of hills on the way. And the race has begun to split up already. The first attacks coming from Zbigniew Spruk of Panaria at the back and Pascal Hervé of Festi Festina. 38 seconds is the split on the first group and 43 seconds back to the group containing David Rebelan. And already abandoned uh, Fabiano Fontanelli, the rider who won yesterday. He climbed off on the very first mountain today, uh, perhaps feeling his stage win was all he came here for. He's gone. And he now has those seven wins under his belt. 25 wins in all in his career. A day for the climbers indeed and a nervous day for the man in pink as he watches the other riders launch the initial attacks and tries not to panic in these opening stages. Pascal Hervé, the rider taking the drink. A man, any man who gains a few seconds over the field today. And what's going on here? Because that was a clear push off the road there. And I'm not too sure why on earth that happened, but that was Fausto Dotti who pushed off the road uh, Filippo Simeone and for no apparent reason. Well, I'm sure there'll be a fine tonight for that and a warning from the referees because that, you know, is a disqualification if the referees take that sort of attitude. I think it's come as a show of frustration because as they start the final 12 kilometers climb to the finish, the race is virtually all back together again. There they are, top of our picture, the main field are right on them. And now the counter-attacks are beginning, that's Pavel Tonkov of Paneri who launches a very quick assault. And number 66 here is Ivan Gotti, lying 8th overall, he's trying to latch on, Enrico Zain is the Carrera rider. We just need to get up alongside and catch on the second rider there, it looks like it might well be Pyotr Ugramov, and it is. Ugramov, the rider who finished second overall in 1993 and really did give Miguel Injuain a run for his money that year and third in the tour last year. So Pavel Tonkov starting to stretch the field a little bit. The Panaria team still have a full complement of riders in this event too, showing a good all-round depth of strength. Rebelin. Well, he's wise to make the counter move. He knows he's going to be attacked heavily on this climb. Now it's going to be left to him and him alone to bridge the gap. It looks as though Zaina is in a little bit of trouble here as well. He's starting to lose ground as the climb heads up towards the summit. And all of the pressure is being applied today by the Russian rider Pavel Tonkov. Tonkov has sat on the front here. Ugramov has glued limpet-like to his back wheel. And Zaina is losing ground to those who are coming up from behind. So this is a fine show of strength here by Pavel Tonkov. 27 years of age, been a pro since 1992. And last year he finished 6 overall in the Giro, so be it. 11 and a half minutes behind the winner. And some 7 minutes uh, behind, in fact the rider behind him right now, Pyotr Ugramov. As they head up towards the All final right. kilometre, no one has helped. In fact, Tonkov, here's a counter move coming from Olano, the world champion. And there is still no sign there of a counter move coming from David Rebelin. So, Rebelin is really in trouble now. As Olano talked about as the pre-race favourite, Rebelin is about fourth down the line here, so he's keeping Olano in his sights. And in fact, he's now got up alongside Olano. Verzine is there as well. But this is the rider as we climb the 1 in 10 or 10% finishing mountain to Prato Nervoso. Well, you know, the Panaria team have had a lot of faith in Pavel Tonkov as producing the goods when it matters in the mountains and it looks as though now we see the reason as to why it's been the Panaria team chasing down breaks they've seen as important while not declaring their colours as to exactly who their leader has been. And now they've got to the second big mountain finish of the Giro. Quite clearly, Tonkov has been their man. Fourth in 1994, fifth in 1993, and sixth last year. So Tonkov is a rider for the GC and the Giro. There's no doubt about that. Is he getting enough time? And I would say he most certainly is now over Rebelin to take the overall lead of the Tour and pull on the pink jersey. He'll only be the second ever Russian to do that. The other one is Evgeny Berzin. This is Gotti setting the pace behind. He will have noted too that Berzin is not with him. 
Only a short stage today, but a very tough one and quite clearly a very decisive one as Pavel Tonkov races up towards the line. Tonkov easily sprinting clear of Ugrimov and he's going to get the pink jersey as a reward. Tonkov gets the stage. Ugrimov is over in second place. Now the time is counting. That's Buena Hora at the front, tenth in last year's Tour de France. Little Colombian climber. Well, he's not so little really. He's quite, quite tall and lanky. As Olana is just behind him. Zaina has survived. He's going to get third place. The clock counting him down to around about 20 seconds on the line. Zaina will take third place. And Rebelin is finding the strength to grab fourth. It won't be enough because it's going to be around about 30 seconds, the deficit. So the new leader of the tour will be Pavel Tonkov. Rebelin gets fourth. And fifth is Buena Hora there, Colombian and Kelme. And sixth, Abraham Olano. And just look at the damage this final climb has done here. The Pulte riders were less spent because they've kept Rebelan in the hunt without doubt. But here's one big loser here, Evgeny Berzin, almost a minute loss for him. So Tonkov, the stage winner by two seconds ahead of Zaina, Rebelan, Buenohorna, Olano, Gotti. Overall though, look at the changes. Tonkov now leads Ugrimov by 20 seconds, Zaina third at 38, Rebelan drops to fourth at 41 and Berzin, he's now a minute and 31 seconds back as we move on to the 14th stage. And this 205 kilometers takes us now across the Col de Madalena into France and we climb the giant Col d'Isoire before the finish in the old part of the city of Briançon. And the man who has survived the breakaway at the front, here he is, Heinz Imbruden. He originally went on the move on the Col de Vars with Gotti, Belly, Massey and Nelson Rodriguez. He was dropped on the climb, he got back and he's left them all now to be swept up by the chase group, not surprisingly led now by Panaria. And there is the pink jersey of the new leader Pavel Tonkov in third position. Heinz Imboden, his lead coming down all of the time, it's just over two minutes now. Nelson Rodriguez on his way back in fact uh, to the pink jersey bunch. The Panaria boys showing they're really feeling pretty strong. And this now on the climb of the Col d'Isoire here, this is Pascal Richard who's trying a tentative escape. Richard rides for the MG team. He won a couple of stages in the Giro d'Italia last year. He's also a past king of the mountains in 1994, so he's got the qualifications. The Swiss rider rides on an Italian team, speaks Italian fluently. And that's the group behind at the moment that Richard is going away from and climbing steadily on the Col d'Isoire. He's picking up here, Heinz Imboden, Nelson Rodriguez has gone back. A surprising rider, Richard. I remember him when he won the World Cyclocross Championship back in 1988. The same day his new team of the time, Wyman, were having a press reception to announce their sponsorship. He was outside the window winning their first world title. It was an amazing day. That was in Switzerland. And now we have Pascal climbing very, very solidly today. A far cry from a couple of years ago when he was the king of the mountains. He spent a lot of time in the region here in very bad weather in the Tour of Italy. But through these pictures today in perfect conditions in the Alps, in the French Alps at that, we're now watching the group behind and Pavel Tonkov looking very, very solid indeed down there. On the back wheel of Pyotr Ugrimov and trying to pull clear a select group on the climb of the Iswad. By the way, a little uh, footnote to the fight we saw, Fausto Dotti fined, by the way, not just 30 seconds in time penalties, but also $1,000 for that little punch he threw at uh, Filippo Simeone. Back to the race here. We've got, uh, sitting at the front now, the pink jersey. That's the place to be if you've got the strength. Further up the climb and gaining time, but not racing to the pink jersey yet, at least Pascal Richard. Good crowds here on the Col d'Isoire. Most of them French, of course. Although we're not too far away uh, from the Italian frontier. The Tour de France also racing in this region later this year, but it won't use the Col d'Isoire. It will use some of the climbs, though, the Tour of Italy are going over. Over the top of the Isoire, the road's barren, but the snow, even at this height, seemingly melted. 2,360 metres at the top of the climb. Pascal Richard is the first man over it. 182 kilometres covered. Now the descent down towards Briançon. A happy stage town, by the way, for Pascal because he won a stage of the Tour de France, there, his first ever stage victory in the Tour de France, down in Briançon in 1989. 
And Ugrimov claims second place, Tonkov third, Zain has gone over in the white jersey, he's fourth, and the world champion Abraham Olano has gone over the top in fifth place, and they're sharing a drink down there now. 41 seconds is the gap, so it's nothing too significant, and it's all downhill now to the finish. It's not all downhill to the actual line, though, because you climb up through the old town of uh, Briançon, and then you cross the line, and hopefully, in the case of Richard, you stay away. This is Claudio Chiapucci, who's attacked on the descent. He always was a curless descender when he had the yellow jersey in the Tour de France on the descent of the Tourmalet as he started his final climb up to Luzardi Den. That was the first uh, time we ever remember back in 1989. This great man, Claudio Chiapucci, he was caught by Greg Lamond at the start of the climb and then left for dead. But as we descend now down into Briançon, Pascal Richard should just about hang on at two. A few seconds advantage he's got over the field. It's not going to be a pink jersey for him, but it's certainly going to be a stage win. Well, the road's devoid of the public here, but they're all waiting for him as we climb up into the old town. And this is Keir Pucci, still clear of the chase, taking the corner very wide indeed. But you have to take your hat off to Pascal Richard. He must be one of the shrewdest bike riders in the world. He always gets a win of every stage race. He watches for the right day. And today he's chosen certainly the perfect moment. Under the kilometre to go flag, he is clear. Kiapucci is chasing him. And then we have the group containing Olano, Tonkov, Hervé, Zaina and David Rebelin. Are also, he's also in that group. They're riding around about half a minute back. Kiapucci is only actually dangling just off the front of that group I've just mentioned. If he looks over his shoulder on these climbs, there's a real chance he would see them chasing him. And as we watch uh, Pascal Richard here, one of the noted retirements we've just heard about is uh, Silvio Martinello. He has retired today, the sprinter. Perhaps he'll now prepare for the upcoming Olympic Games where he's going in the points. Well, Claudio Chiapucci, he made all of his advantage on the descent. He looks to be struggling now on this nasty little drag up to the finish in the old town. Pascal Richard, I think he's got the buffer he requires over the speed humps there as he comes up towards the line, but he's got far enough now. The last time check we got was 40 seconds over Chiapucci and 50 seconds on the field. Taking no chances, he looks over his shoulder, but he won't see much in these narrow roads and all the cars right behind him, through the gate of the old town. And a big crowd watching the arrival of the Tour of Italy into France here, and they're seeing it being won, yes, by an Italian team rider, but very much a Swiss man. Twice the national champion, twice a stage winner previously a year ago in the Tour of Italy, now gets the win here, Pascal Richard is home, Claudio Chiapucci is suffering, but he's hanging on to second place here. It looks as though he might well get it, but only just because the field are right up behind him there. There they are. And Chiapucci into the old citadel and now racing up towards the line. He's found his legs for a little bit of a sprint here and he'll need to sprint because he is only one or two seconds ahead of that field just come around the corner there. The pink jersey of Tonkov is safe. Chiapucci is also safe. He gets second. A lot of the world champion beats Hervé in the sprint. Ugrimov, Zaina, Tonkov, Rebelin. That was the order over the line. And then we go back to the next group in. This looks like Buena Hora brings over Berzin, who has conceded a few more seconds today. The first victory by MG in this year's Giro d'Italia. And the victory going by 43 seconds to Pascal Richard over... Claudio Chiapucci, that was a nice ride and it's good to see him back in the overall result, but not in the overall classification because Tonkov keeps his 20 seconds lead, in fact no change at all in the immediate placings overall. So today Pavel Tonkov says goodbye to France with that 20 second overall lead advantage over Piotr Ugrimov and now we head back to Aosta, 224 kilometres, the riders going home to Italy now for what is a very vicious end to this year's Giro d'Italia. Today the stage, as I say, 224 kilometres, we say goodbye to France over the Col de Mont Genevre, that's the way into Italy and then down into the valleys. Pavel Tonkov now not too worried by an escape which has gone up the road containing six riders they've got 48 seconds but their lead is building and in the escape is Gianni Bugno the Italian champion
It's interesting to note at this stage too that Pavel Tonkov, his team, are the only team left in the Giro d'Italia this year with a full complement of nine men. Here's the breakaway, and in the breakaway we've got Manuel Beltran, Sergei Uzlamin, Gianni Bugno, Francesco Casagrande, Carlo Finco, and Alex Zivakov. And I can tell you too that four of the riders in this breakaway have never won a race as a professional. But this man has Gianni Bugno. He has won plenty of big time races, including the World Championship twice, the climb up to Alp Duez twice, and indeed the Tour of Italy national title twice. Well, Gianni Bugno, I think he's going to want this one. He's coming lined up very well there. He's lying fourth in line at the moment. It's Casagrande who is leading out, looks over his shoulder. A very nervous approach to the line, this. Not surprisingly, because they've got a small gap over the field as the field is beginning to close down. But Finco now is looking for the whereabouts of his team leader, Bugno, seeing if he's on his wheel. And in fact, Bugno, I'm sure, wants to win this stage. The reason being, the press here in Italy have given him such a hard time in making him look like a very poor rider indeed. And I suppose to some degree, having been dropped on most of the climbs this time in the Tour of Italy, he hasn't been that good either. Anyway, he's out to make amends, or is he? Because Finco is giving him the perfect lead out. Bugno goes to the right of the picture. Casagrande takes him on as well, but Bugno is going to have to challenge hard here. He's kicking for the line, and Bugno is going clear with a very good sprint indeed here. Gianni Bugno pushing it all the way and gets his revenge. Bugno crosses the line ahead of Casagrande. Third place, I think, will go to Sergei Uzlamin of Russia and not very far behind but almost three minutes the main pack coming in here but Pavel Tonkov in the pink he will stay that way no change at all in the overall lead in the Tour of Italy a little flower for the helpers and Gianni Bugno back on the high spot and I must say this is quite a swing around for the Bucks and zipping his top up Pavel Tonkov stays in the overall lead as the race now moves on to stage 16 and as we take a quick look around the museum, the Olympic Museum in Lausanne in Switzerland, the riders now facing up to a ride away from Italy after their brief incursion and back out to a foreign country, Switzerland. The race route taking them 180 kilometres through Montreux, perhaps made more famous for its film festivals than anything else, and down into Lausanne. And the breakaway today... Well, we're expecting breakaways that perhaps will not affect the overall classification for a couple of days. And this is an attack now by Alexander Gonchenkov, who's having uh, probably his best ever season. He's lying 32nd overall in the event, more than 15 minutes behind the pink jersey here of Pavel Tonkov. And you can see his lead has gone up now to 4 minutes and 41 seconds. And it's a simple job for Panaria today, just to keep an eye on the way things are going. Also up there with Gonchenkov, Heinz Inbiden and Putini. But he got rid of those two and is now coming up to the line here. And Alexander Gonchenkov, what a great season he is having. He started off so well with second in Tirano Adriatico and second in Milan San Remo. Eighth in the Tour of Flanders, fourth in the Amstel Gold Race. And now he's going to get a much well-deserved stage win in the Tour of Italy after almost five hours in the saddle today. The Roslotto rider. And uh, he's quite a humorist on the circuit too is Alexander Gonchenkov and a very popular man. The Russians, uh, many of them domiciled in Italy, are now anxious to show their colours to what they see as a home crowd. So in Lausanne, it's a Russian who celebrates the joint centenaries of the modern Olympiad and the promoting newspaper La Gazzetta della Sport. There he is, prepares to give the two-handed salute for Alexander Gonchenkov. The chase by Imboden and Felici Putini, and they never got on, and they finished around about 20 seconds behind. Another pink jersey, an unchallenged day for him too, Pavel Tonkov, now waiting for his rendezvous with the time trials and the mountains as the race now moves on towards its finish in Baia on the 17th day of the Giro. And so the riders now preparing for their return yet again to Italy from Lausanne, having paid their respects to the modern Olympiad and the route bringing through Martigny over 236 kilometres, the big climb of the San Bernard Pass, through back through Iosta, where we were a couple of days ago, and down to the finish in Bayea. There is the contour. 
nearly 2,000 metres high, the Grand Saint Bernard Pass has done absolutely nothing today to alter the course of the race. And Beau Larson attacking after only 8 kilometres of the race, and Laurent Roux of France joining him, and the two have had a maximum lead of more than 26 minutes. I suppose at some time in every big stage race you get the opportunities doing this. It's the sort of day that nobody, it seems, wants to attack the pink jersey of Pavel Tonkov. Little Long Rue is something of a climber, been a pro now for two seasons and he's only ever won three races but even so that's three more than Bo Larson who turned professional on the basis of his fine sixth world championship placing in Colombia last year. And Bo Larson, one of a clutch of famous Danes and they're all the famous Danish team of a couple of years ago that seemed to win around the world, everything they did and I think every one of them now, Bo Larson's the last one, they've all turned professional. Well, the breakaway is still many, many minutes ahead. The last time check we got, it was 17 minutes up. And as you can see now, we're only two kilometers from the finish. And I think a little bit of finessing is in order here. Laurent Roux has been pushed into the lead by Nikolai Bo Larsen. It's a shame when one of the riders have to lose at this stage because they've been in the lead today for 228 kilometers by the time they cross the line. It's going to be a very difficult stage to win because they've got all the time in the world they need to play out this one. There's nobody going to pick them up now. They've been in the lead for about 5 hours and 35 minutes of the time on the screen there. Well, Bo Larson wants the first win of his life as a pro anyway and he started the sprint now. And wouldn't it be any help to remind him now that he shares a flat with Glenn Magnuson, the only other rider on his team to win a stage of this year's Giro, the Amora Evita team. And I don't think little Laurent Roux has got any answer to the sprint here, but he's going to have a go. Laurent Roux is now digging very sharply on the right. He's lost it by inches in the end. He made that desperate attempt, and uh, I'm not surprised. Upset Laurent Roux there. He didn't quite get on to the level of Nikolai Bo Larsen. And uh, Laurent Roux, perhaps a better climber than a sprinter, tries to get alongside Nikolai Bolarsen at this, but there's a lot of power coming out of the red-haired Dane, and he gets his first ever ra race victory as a professional. It comes in the Tour of Italy. The sprint now for the third place, and this is uh, Sergio Barbaro who looks like he's going to take it out for Correggio, he's sprinting very well actually and Marco Della Vadova, he gets fourth and fifth is Amicari Tronca and the remnants of the field coming in, all of the field, look at the time on the clock here you can see how seriously today Tonkov took the breakaway 16 and a half minutes albeit for the main field coming in, Tonkov not too far away from the front there's confirmation of the stage result to Teriuk was the rider there who got six from Kazakhstan the overall situation, no change at all these past few days. Tonkov 20 seconds ahead of Ugramov, Zaina is third. So the Giro d'Italia back home in Italy now, five stages to go, the big time trial tomorrow followed by two tough mountain stages, a tough weekend ahead for Pavel Tonkov. 216 kilometres of flat roads today, these won't concern him at all and it looks as though it's going to come down to another sprint finish as we come under the one kilometre to go barrier. And again, Mario Cipollini, who has come through the mountains so far and gone through France and Switzerland, is now going to try and get the stage. He's got himself a perfect position right again. Uh, this time he's up behind Giovanni Lombardi. He's gone round the back of the big balloon. But Mario Cipollini tucked in there now. He's still holding his fire. He's lying there in second place as he swings round into the home straight. The champion of Italy goes very wide. And it looks now as though he's going to have to kick. He makes it look almost casual, this, but the power in this man, who pushes all of the strength right from his shoulder, is down into those long legs and Lombardi is not going to get on terms with him at all and neither is Casarotto or Scrigno. That's the order over the line. It's Cipollini, Lombardi, it was Zubinia Spruck who got third, Guidi in fourth place, Casarotto 
And they were all virtually in a straight line. Mario Cipollini gets his fourth stage win at this tour and would you believe his 16th stage win in all of the Giros he's ridden. Overall, no change at all. There will be tomorrow because it's now the eve of the big time trial. And showdown time with the 62 kilometers individual time trial. Will it decide the Giro d'Italia? Starting from Vicenza, it goes through to Marostica and it is a test starting on flat roads but it builds up as the race progresses and really it should decide at least a solid order before the race goes into two very difficult days in the Dolomites before that final day down to the finish in Milan. This is the overall situation at the start this morning. Tonkov 20 seconds ahead of Ugrimov, 38 seconds back is Zaina, 44 seconds back is David Rebelin. We're looking now at the Bianchi bicycle here of Evgeny Berzin an excellent time trialist, his memory going back to a couple of years ago when he beat Miguel Indurain and went on to win the Giro d'Italia, the first ever Russian to do that. He's going to have to fight back now from 8th place, a minute and 41 seconds down. A lot of time to make up to get himself back in the frame. Switching now to Gonchenkov here at the Czech of Braganza. He's gone through with the best time. Zenon Jaskula through there originally with the best time. The rider who once eliminated many riders in the Tour of Switzerland when he went on to win a mountain time trial there. This is the situation at 39 kilometres covered. Gonchenkov leading by a minute and nine seconds. So his good form continues. Not so for Claudio Chiapucci. He's never been a man for the big time trials. His times recorded are showing he's not riding too quickly now having started two minutes in front of Evgeny Berzin and here is Berzin visibly moving quicker and I think very shortly he's going to pick up Kierpucci into his sides because he's gaining big time on him taking the fastest way around the corners here the gay wrist rider as we go back to the start house of Abraham Alano the world champion beaten only by Miguel Indurain to the time trial title almost a year ago towards the end of last season in Colombia he gets the start remember that uh, Alano in seventh place overall and still one minute 20 seconds off Tonkos pink jersey and still the man everybody talks about as the favorite for this year's Giro Berzin Alano two masters of the art against the watch and they're gonna run pretty close at the time checks at the moment the little compact figure on the left there of Evgeny Berzin looks rather frail against the big stout frame of Abraham Olano. This is Pyotr Ugrimov, his turn to start. He starts two minutes in front of Pavel Tonkov. It must be a daunting feeling to know that the leader will be chasing you out of the start house in just two minutes time as Ugrimov goes. A second and third in previous Giro d'Italia's. blue Bianchi frame and the disc wheels here of Evgeny Berzin who settled in to a great start he is showing the best of the starts so far Tonkov still to go of course and Tonkov has gone so Tonkov rolls out of the start house the applause of the crowd the Russian leader of the Giro d'Italia he knows now he's gonna have to produce the ride of his life to keep that pink jersey he said at the press conference yesterday all he wanted to do was a good enough time to keep the pink jersey and get back into the mountains where he has a better chance of defending it, I think. The world champion, this is where he must make his play. Alano has got to gain big time today to put himself in this race with the last weekend to come. Gonchenkov approaching the best time of Finko and gets the best time so far. So Gonchenkov is the trailblazer ahead of the field and continues his good tour. He's had one stage win so far. I might have had two if he hadn't had a flat tyre at one stage when he was in that breakaway with Fontanelli. Now this is Alano at Salcido, the second time check. Chasing the best time already through Evgeny Berzin in 26.29.8. Oh, and look at that. Just eight tenths of a second of better for Abraham Alano. This is going to be quite a race now between Alano and Berzin. They're separated by only a few seconds on the overall classification. 14 to be precise and virtually nothing in it at all between the world champion and Berzin. The course from now on though gets a little bit tougher. 
Here's the situation. We're still the top riders to go through. Olano, best time. 26 minutes, 29 seconds. Look at this. Caught for two minutes. Claudio Chiapucci are made to be looking as though he's slowing right down. Evgeny Berzin plows on. The long, empty road ahead of him, and the same can be said for the race leader here. He is sweeping up today, starting last man out of the start house. And Pavel Tonkov not looking very good at all there. The time checks will reveal all very shortly, but he didn't look as though he was going too well. Because of the rules, uh, no motorbike camera is allowed up on the rider's shoulders anymore, so we're going to have to take these pictures from the rear and imagine what the faces look like. Tonkov, 1 minute 16. That's an awful lot of time lost by Tonkov on the best time so far. You know, his pink jersey very much in danger to either Alano or Berzin. Advantage Alano at the moment. Here it is, Alano, 26-29, Tonkov down there in only 8th place, a minute 16 seconds off the pace, and Alano starting today, 1.27 behind Pavel Tonkov. Head-to-head -head battle between Berzin and Alana. They are locked together, these two riders. It is going to be a terrific finish to this time trial. Who is going to have the strength towards the end? Because it's going to tell all of that. Gojta Ugrimov coming through at the check of Braganza. Chasing a lowly time here because he's going now. Ugrimov only through in fifth place. Berzin the best time to arrive here for the moment. So Ugrimov continues, we're looking at Evgeny Berzin here now as we move on to the fifth intermediate time check and Berzin now setting new times there. So Berzin looks set now to arrive at the finish with the best time, but of course Alano and Ugrimov and Tonkov are all behind him on the course. This is Pavel Tonkov at Braganza and the time is going to tell all here. He's racing against the fifth time of Ugrimov at this check. He comes through, he is 140 down on Berzin. Uh, so he's lost his overall lead if Alano confirms the Braganza because the new leader on the road now is Abraham Alano, unless of course he's lost ground to Evgeny Berzin, and he hasn't. So the best man at the moment, Abraham Alano, the new leader of the Tour of Italy, as the head-to-head -head continues here. Look at this, 114.03 against 113.47 of Berzin. Alano is riding to the pink jersey in the Giro d'Italia at the moment. Taking a lot of risks on the way down there too, Abraham Alano cutting off the corners as Evgeny Berzin continues to ride himself back into a high place also in the Giro d'Italia. We could see Berzin, Alano, Tonkov, the men at the top of the leaderboard tonight. Berzin still finding plenty of speed in those little legs of his as he races down towards the finish now. Huge crowd here cheering on Berzin, the first ever Russian to win overall the Tour of Italy. He's chasing the time of Gonchenkov and it's going to be desperately close. The quality ride of Gonchenkov is there for you to see and now you see the new best time, 1.13.59 for Evgeny Berzin. That's the best time on the board. Abraham Alano has got to match that time, preferably he's got to better it by about 14 seconds if he's any chance of taking the pink jersey with Tonkov still to finish. And it's going to be very, very close indeed, but it's not going to be that much better than Berzin. It's not going to be a pink jersey for Alano at all. It could be for Berzin, though. As he comes up to the finish, Alano is going to be 1.1 seconds slower. So Alano has been reversed by Berzin. He drops into second place. This is Ugrimov at the fifth checkpoint. His helmet has gone into the crowd, feeling the heat, as has that too, of Pavel Tonkov at the Maglia Rosa of the Giro d'Italia. What a time trial this has turned out to be. There still could be a pink jersey awaiting Evgeny Berzin. It all will depend on the time now of Pavel Tonkov, but he does seem to be getting better as the race goes on. He certainly made a rough start and lost a lot of time, but he's now beginning to close in just a little bit. He may well save the day yet. Here's the time checks coming up. It'll be an interesting one. It must compare now with Evgeny Berzin. There's a rider going through who appears to have given up the ghost on the left of our picture there as Tonkov comes over the top, 1.31. It's still very desperate days for Tonkov because Berzin, 1.41. His deficit overnight. It could be that Tonkov is going to save that jersey by a matter of seconds.
face of Pavel Tonkov. We finally get a little look at it there as our camera slips in alongside, rapidly pulls back to allow Tonkov to shoot at that left-hand corner. Here's the arrival now, Pyotr Ugramov. He's also off the leaderboard now as he races towards the fifth time of Carlo Finko. A little bit of a sprint from the Latvian. It's not going to be a great ride from Pyotr Ugamov. It's only going to be four, sixth place at the moment and still Tonkov to come. The last man out on the course, Tonkov. Every pedal rev could be inching him just clear, Evgeny Berzin. He could well be saving the overall lead. He certainly wasn't the way at half distance, but it might well be now. As he hits the line, 127 is the gap. Tonkov will keep his jersey, and by my reckoning, Alano will be very, very close, desperately close, and Berzin will be a few seconds behind Alano. That's the way I see it. And let's have a look. The result of the stage, Berzin gets it by a single second from Alano. Gonchenkov is third. Tonkov is fourth at 127. And that ride by Pavel Tonkov, and did he suffer, has kept him in the pink jersey. There it is. A single second because the times are rounded to the second Alano is in second place and Tonkov keeps his overall lead and now he's got to do it all over again if he's going to run out the winner of the Giro d'Italia the Passo Poi Dois is climbed twice here in the Dolomites once midway through and once to the finishing line at the end of a ride of 220 kilometers this is the sting in the tail that everybody has talked about the first of two very very vicious days indeed the race starting from Bazzano del Grappa, once the scene of the World Championships, and now it is racing all over the mountains of the Dolomites. And the big decisive climbs will be the 2,000 metre plus, there's four of them today, including that two climbs, as I say, of the Pass Poidois. And here, as we head towards it for the first time, perhaps predictably, Mariano Piccoli, the leader of the King of the Mountains, and indeed the defending champion, in this breakaway with Filippo Simeone. And no immediate reaction from the field, because Piccoli is chasing the King of the Mountains points, while Simeone, a second-year professional, is just trying to grab himself a little piece of glory on the Carrera team. Massive crowd here. All sensing today they could witness uh, the kill and uh, as to exactly who will win the Giro d'Italia. Tonkov, remember, just protecting a single second advantage over Abraham Olano, the world champion. This is Rudolfo Massi here who's trying to get across to Piccoli and Simeone on the climb of the Poudoir under what is the kilometre banner and it will certainly be that next time around. But this time it's just a kilometre for them to the summit and then they go on, descend to the Marmalada and then climb back over this pass to the finishing line. Still 68 kilometres to go. Piccoli has been a very strong and decisive leader in the King of the Mountains. He was a good winner last year and now he looks set to gather enough points to be the winner this time around as well. Up to the summit of the climb, the clock gets ready. No reaction from Simeone, he's going to allow Piccoli, who's made all of the running up the climb, to get the win, followed by himself, and now it looks as though Massey is hanging on to third place, he's clear of the field, and this is the remnants of the field, a very select group indeed, Gianni Bunyu lost so much time early on, sitting third wheel now as the Panaria team have to do all of the work to try and keep the race in touch. They're more concerned with the content of that chase group, which does include Berzin and indeed Alano and Ugramov, so the danger men, the men most dangerous uh, to Pavel Tonkov, are still alongside him. But one climb of the big pass is over. Now on the way down, and it looks as though Massey is going to make contact very shortly with the two leaders, Piccoli and Simeone. Makes an interesting three-man breakaway, the combination which could survive here. Vladimir Belli of Paneri is such a strong teammate of Tonkov, setting the pace. Aina comes through in second place. He's a bit of a surprise in this race. Then comes the pink jersey by just one single second, Pavel Tonkov. And the man who's haunting him now, right on his wheel there, Abraham Olano. An attack going up the inside there. Looks like uh, the rider attacking is Brasiliat uh, Fausto Dotti. A reaction coming, I think, from Biet Ziberg of Switzerland. They're on the lower slopes. And meanwhile, the three leaders together here now assessing the situation. Working well together. Massey is having an inspired tour here. The stage win already. He's been a pro for nine years, don't forget. Join the leaders on a day when he might feel that the infighting will all be reenacted behind. 
as Tonkov tries to contain Alano. Still heading towards the climb of the Marmalada. Long downhill run now before they only have to climb back up to the summit next time around. There'll be no more downhill. Here's a glance at the field and I don't see any of the stars missing. Evgeny Berzin looking pretty relaxed. And he's just having a little chat with his teammate there. Bruno Kengialta, a strong man when you need him. But it looks as though this group has lost a little bit of its impetus here on the climb of the Marmalada and in fact are being caught and drawn in very, very quickly indeed. There is Dotty who was away but he's now back at the head of the field. Number 33 there is Biet Zieberg, so they've both been picked up. And this is the advanced scout group and this is the pink jersey group here. Ivan Gotti also here. And none of the real favourites missing from this select climbing group. You wouldn't get anything out of the face here of Pyotr Ugumov who looks across at Abraham Alano, the champion of the road race. What a great title that was to win with a flat tyre, let's not forget. Miguel Indurain taking second place and Spain at last getting a world road racing champion. But the field has caught up and is swelling all the time now. Piccoli in that green jersey drops down a little bit. It looks as though we've got another attack here coming from Dotti. Just testing the water once again. It was his attack that really caused the crumbling of that breakaway of Piccoli, Simone, Simeone and uh, Massey. And they're not really ready to fight again yet, are they? Vladimir Belli setting the pace for Panaria. His job is simple today. Go as fast as you can for as long as you can and then hope that Pavel Tonkov can keep his jersey. That one second margin is not much, is it? And this is Beat Zieberg, who's again caught up with Dotti for the second time today, and this time he's not going to wait for him. He's sprinted uh, straight past Fausto Dotti and left him, and he's gone out on a lone sortie here. Now, this is a good move by the Carrera team, because remember, they have Enrico Zaina still in a high overall position in this league group, and now it's down to the others to chase their beat Zeberg. Feneria, no immediate reaction. Here's Pickley again trying to nibble away at the front. And again, the pack are coming back onto him. So the King of the Mountains, all he wants is the, is the points at the summit. He's quite happy to wait for the pack, but they're not letting him go this time. And this looks like a, a rather cracked Fausto Dotti. The legs have gone as he looks up the road and sees Bietzberg, who won the Grand Prix Frankfurt this year, his first big classic victory in Germany. A very good climber, and if he gets away and settles in, he might well climb over the top of the Marmalada and then onto the Podoi for the finish. But the breakaways have all been spread asunder now. Still Panaria remain in charge. Pavel Tonkov, who's always had a high finish in all of the tours he's ridden here. Now 27 years of age, been a professional for, this will be his fifth season. Now one of the stunning views here in the Dolomites of how they build these roads in Italy, I'll never know. The gap is up to 50 seconds from the first group, which contains the pink jersey. Zberg now heads gently towards the top of the Marmalada and then the descent and then the climb up to the top of the Poidoi and the finish. And the group is absolutely shattering now. Just tagging on to the back here of the pink jerseys, Abraham Alano, that second looking a little bit fragile for him even. As Ugramov also starts to increase the pace. On the far side it's Zaina. So Pavel Tonkov, perhaps the advantage you know, has swung back to the Russian rider. Now we're away from the time trial because that's the first time I've noted Abraham Alano actually suffering on the climbs during this Giro. Here's Aina, sitting at the front of the group. One of the real finds of this year's Giro and uh, a good replacement for the absent Marco Pantani. Ugramov now into his 30s and still riding like a very young man in second place. A Tonkov without the Panaria team around him now, they've been blown out on this climb. It's quite a tough climb, the Marmalada, by the way. It certainly isn't an easy stepping stone to the finish climb of the Pordoi, and it looks as though Evgeny Berzin also is not feeling too hot after his great time trial. That's Gotti tagged on to a suffering Alano. And there's still a long way to go up this climb. 
Tonkov looks a lot better than Alano does. So we've got Zaina, Ugramov, Tonkov and then Alano gone and losing ground Evgeny Berzin. And they're still trying to hunt down Bietzberg up front. But they won't be worried too much about him at the minute. There he is down there. And it looks as though Alano, his World Championship jersey unzipped all of the way down, has cracked. Alano losing ground. If Tonkov looked over his shoulder now, he would take a lot of solace in that. Because Alano, the man who was the favourite, especially after that great time trial yesterday, looks to be in serious trouble now. And this is not the finishing climb. So there's a lot of big time could be gained by Tonkov here. And Tonkov now should turn his attention probably to Enrico Zaina because he's the next danger man on the books because all of the others seem to have dropped away from the overall classification. Alano was at one second behind, now he's about six overall. Berzin, who was 14 seconds behind at the start of the day, he's even further back behind Alano. Ugrimov is still in that group with Tonkov. He started though one minute 58 seconds behind Pavel Tonkov. Here's Berzin. And Berzin, in fact, looks to be in a little bit of trouble even in that group so a, a study in concentration here to Pavel Tonkov as Ugamov rides well but the man who is dishing out all of the pain here is Enrico Zaina Tonkov comes over the top of Ugamov as Ugamov looked at him with quite a grimace on his face I think that Ugamov may have cracked here he's lost the ground he seemed to be going so well just a few seconds ago there was an acceleration by Zaina Tonkov spotted it jumped it and has now put Ugramov in all sorts of trouble but not as much trouble as the world road race champion Abraham Alano he looks to be finding a little bit of a rhythm here but there's nobody left around him to help now he's got a lonely trail to plow by himself Enrico Zaino tapping out the rhythm as he has done since the start of the climb of the Marmolada and Tonkov just hanging on there and hoping. This is Ugramov. And Ugramov still falling back here because that's Ivan Gotti who's come through. And an acceleration now further up the climb by Zaina. What a recovery this is by this rider. A mediocre time trial yesterday, but he's gaining big time now over everybody today. So if you can't ride a time trial, you have to fly in the mountains. And he's got another tough day to come tomorrow as well. The pink jersey now has been dispatched backwards. This is superb cycling by Enrico Zaina. As we climb steadily now towards the finish, he has put the pink jersey in serious trouble. But Tonkov knows if he can limit his losses to just this one man, he will keep that pink jersey tonight. Enrico Zaina for Carrera. And one would have to wonder quite what Pantani would have done on similar slopes here had he had his usual form in the mountains. Instead, we're having to watch his teammate Zaina, and he's doing a pretty good job of it, isn't he? Continues to look very, very frisky at the front, inspired by the fact that he's heading towards his second stage victory in this year's Giro d'Italia. Far and away his best ever tour. But watching the battle behind as riders are beginning to crack. Rider number 66 is Ivan Gotti. He's having an inspired climb now. He's come right up to the back wheel of Pavel Tonkov. Tonkov may have gritted his teeth and hung on, and now the elastic has snapped. He may have blown. Gotti going by him. It's a long, long climb to the finish on the Podoi, and Ivan Gotti is not going to rush at it. He's got up alongside Pavel Tonkov. Tonkov looks across to the left to see if he can spot anybody coming. He'll take a lot of uh, confidence from the fact that Alano is nowhere in sight now. And Ugrimov, well, he's found his second wind here. He's coming right up behind Tonkov and Gotti. And that takes a lot of doing. But there aren't many tougher cyclists in Pyotr Ugrimov. He's had his great battles in the Tour of Italy in the past, especially with Miguel Ingerain. Almost run him to the victory too a couple of years ago. He was less than a minute behind him when the final analysis was made. And on this little bit of the flatter slopes here, he's coming across to the leaders. 
Meanwhile, further down the slopes, the pain here on only Moto3 of the World Road Race Champion, Abraham Alano, who has been joined now by Stefano Faustini from the Aki team. Another man has featured throughout this three-week race and will still be consolidating a top 10 overall position if he can hang on uh, to the world champion. But it seems nobody can hang on to Zaina. Continues to climb with tremendous confidence. And Faustini, in fact, he's just come up and has now been dropped by a very steady piece of riding here from Alano. Experience telling perhaps when he knew he was making the effort just a little bit over his limit he dropped back now he's found his rhythm again and continues to climb reasonably well this is Gotti first came to our notice a year ago in the Tour de France where he snatched the race lead for a day you may remember that the referees then split the bunch timing at the finish and the jersey went across to Bjorn Reese, his Danish teammate Reese not here and preparing for the Tour de France well, he'll take on Miguel Indurain, of course, who is also not here. They say you can't win both the Tour of Italy and the Tour de France anymore. You have to make the choice. And that, in many ways, is a shame for the Giro d'Italia because it leaves out some of the big names. But you can't complain about the competition because Enrico Zaina has ridden superbly today. And Ugramov continues to set the tempo. And it looks to me as though, in fact, Abraham Alano is beginning to climb back into the picture here. He took a packet at the start of the climb, but he is closing in. And that's terrific show determination from the world champion. Zaina is still climbing clearly to a stage victory. But look at this now. Alano has come back to the side of Pavel Tonkov. The one-second gap once more exists. Tonkov is in all sorts of trouble here. His rhythm has gone. Azugramov, who climbed back into the picture, has gone past uh, Pavel Tonkov. And now I wonder now if Abraham Alano will get up alongside Tonkov and let him see he's arrived. The Basque flag flying on the left of our picture and they all wanted to catch a glimpse of Abraham Alano and now he's going to kick and kick hard so Tonkov can't react Tonkov is trying to react he probably can only think of one second as he digs very very deep indeed but he's going to, if he does win the Tour of Italy now he's going to, going to be a true champion he had to fight back in the time trial to save that jersey by a second and now when things seemingly were going so well he's having to fight back again to hang on to Abraham Alano. But it could well be that the pink jersey denied Olano yesterday, yesterday by that one second will be his today but first he's got to get rid of the pink jersey of Tonkov. But the acceleration by Alano is taking him back up to Ugramov. Look at the face of Ugramov here, just ahead of him, and he's seen him, Ivan Gotti. Well, this has been a tough climb up the Marmalada, but Zaina has been the man to go over the top in first place. We're now seeing the chase behind. Gotti has gone over, followed by Ugramov. We're on the descent. You're no sooner down than you're on the climb again, next time of the Podoi. And that will take them to the finish. What a vicious day this has been in the Dolomites. The whole two weeks of racing now proving to be just shadow boxing. The time trial opened up the gaps, or in the case of Alano and Tonkov, it didn't. And now it's a matter of opening up the gaps yet again here in the Dolomites. 20 kilometers to go, at least we've got a little bit of downhill first some 12 miles to the finish well the depth that these professionals have gone to here to show their true depths of courage because they've all taken a bad ride except this rider Zaina on the climb of the Marmalada and they've all had to fight back a real showdown indeed and they've come back together Gotti at the rear followed in front of him by the Roslotto rider Ugumov then Tonkov of Panaria and being led of course uh, by the world champion Abraham Alano heading into the town before we start the climb up to the finish Alano looks a little bit more settled to me now what, the di what a difference one mountain makes because it's probably Tonkov now who is a little bit worried about the climb ahead these four riders having left behind them a shattered main field the pink jersey the world champion a Latvian and an Italian 
and it's the Latvian, the oldest man in the group who is setting the pace. Tonkov trying now, I think, to demonstrate to Alano that he's not really tired at all by riding in front of him. Ivan Gotti, the rider to watch, he's nothing to gain at the moment, although he's reasonably well up overall, but he's the man who knows he no need to involve himself with the infight that exists between Alano and Tonkov, and he might take an advantage from that later. The gap now up to one minute for Enrico Zaina. He's never put a wheel wrong, has he? He's climbed so well on the Marmalada, and now we're on the Podoi, and it looks like he's climbing to overall victory. There's his deficit, four minutes, nine seconds behind overnight in eighth place to Tonkov. That makes him four minutes, ten seconds uh, to Alano. He's pulling back a minute of that at the moment. So he's climbing up the overall classification. And it looks as though Gotti may well have slipped the other two here, the other three rather. And this is Bunyo. He's come from absolutely nowhere. Jenny Bunyo has crossed the gap to the leaders from absolutely nowhere. Well, that's an inspired day for the champion of Italy, the man who lost 11 minutes very early on in the opening week of this year's Giro has now found himself on an inspired ride today. The champion of Italy has joined the leaders. And not only has he joined them, but he's going. And I don't think there can be much of a reaction here because they know he's so far behind overall. They're not going to chase him down and risk another rider jumping them when they do it. And so, well, having said that, in fact, Ugramov has climbed back up to Bunyo without really doing much about it. I think Bunyo must have slowed down there. Ugramov, Olano, Tonkov and Jani Bunyo takes fourth wheel. Gotti is the man who slipped them and I don't know if Bunyo will know about that because he wasn't in that group when he came up to join Olano. And Gotti is closing in on Zaina. It's down to 49 seconds but the gap over the others is opening up at almost a minute and a half now the advantage for Zaina. He's climbing up the overall classification in leaps and bounds here and there's still a long way to go up this climb. This beautiful mountain range, the Dolomites in Italy, providing a great battleground today. He really doesn't look in any trouble, does he, Zaina? This is Alano now trying again to test Tonkov. He only needs a second. And then providing he stays within range of Zaina, he'll get the pink jersey. And at the most crucial stage of the event, just two more days to go. But again, Ugramov, this man just will not give up. He is such a hard man, grits his teeth and powers his way back to the wheel of the world champion. Uh, Tonkov, I think, by my opinion here, is just praying for the end of this stage. Now he is hanging. And Bunyo, who attacked, has been brought back yet again. Twice the world champion, twice a winner of the famous mountain stage in the Tour de France at Alpe d'Huez, by the way. Only two other Italians have ever done that. The very first one in 1952 was the late and great Fausto Coppi, and the other one was Roberto Conti, who after riding a career of 10 years, that was his first ever road race victory. But back with the Tour of Italy, and the man who is making his name today, no, not Marco Pantani of Carrera, but Enrico Zaina, now only three kilometers from the finish. I'm not surprised the Carrera team here don't believe they're having such a day. The great battle that should have been between Alano and between Tonkov and Berzin. And it's not that way at all. It is Zaina now who's getting all the Italian cheers on the climb as they look down and see him coming up towards the summit. If anything, he's going quicker and quicker, despite the apparent fitness of the spectators. And there's an attack on at the front. Alano trying once again just to shake his tail. He wants to get rid just that one second and he will get the pink jersey because the gaps aren't big enough to, to Zanina. Uh, Zaina rather. But look at this. Tonkov is a limpet. He's locked himself onto the back wheel of the world champion. He refuses to be dislodged. And all this happening as we go under one kilometre to go now for Enrico Zaina. He's going to get the stage win for sure. But at what time gaps over the rest? And that will be crucial. Gotti is still chasing him. Although we haven't seen anything of him. Our cameras seem to be sped all over the mountains as well today. And not too happy with the closeness of the Tifosi. As Zaina heads up towards the finish. 
and they're just about jumping back here as he blasts his way through the tunnel and this will be a first for Enrico Zaina leading a stage of the Giro d'Italia up to a mountain top finish and there's not much further to go now he just makes sure as all good pros do that nobody is sneaking up in this case it will be Ivan Gotti but no sign of Gotti as Enrico Zaina of Carrera probably will dedicate the stage to Marco Pantani the rider who should have been here of course and was kept out of the sport this season by that terrible crash when he was hit by a car at the end of last season in a race and just look at this over seven hours today in the Dolomites a massive day of mountain climbing and the man who has been inspired throughout it Enrico Zaino gets his second stage win of the Giro d'Italia and the clock now will tell us shortly how long he's got to wait and how high he will climb over the others in this race. I don't think he'll do enough to climb over the actual leaders. Gotti comes in 47 seconds down. Still we've got that crucial sprint. Remember only one second between Alano and Tonkov. Tonkov has got to hang on to the wheel of Alano and I'm not sure he can. As Bunyo gets third, there is a gap there, a very definite gap. Alano will take fourth place and I think there's a second there. They'll give a second back to Tonkov and if he goes to the same time, I think they'll award the pink jersey to Alano because of the better time trial. This is Evgeny Berzin. He is the big loser today, isn't he? Four and a half minutes and count he has conceded his Giro d'Italia has gone out of the window and this is the rider who caused the big time gaps Enrico Zaino the sweat clearly dripping off his face as he comes up to the line to get his second stage win of this year's Giro d'Italia there's the result Gotti comes in at 47 Bunyo Alano and Tonkov was given a time difference he is given second place overall the same time as Abraham Alano Zaino is up into third place what a race this is turning out to be denied yesterday the pink jersey the world champion gets it today and by the way he was given the victory or the lead rather by 46 hundredths of a second that was the official time gap the final day in the Dolomites the Saturday the penultimate day of the race the longest one as well 250 kilometers now uh, taking the rise from Cavalese on a tour of the Dolomites and there are some brutes here four of them are topping the list of all of the climbers today the race will finish down in a pre-cup and there's a little rundown on the profile the biggest of the clients is the Paso di Gavia but watch out for the Mortarolo which is a brute of 13 kilometers we join the race here on the Paso di Gavia and alone in the lead is the Colombian climber Hernan Buenahora and he was the rider who took 10th place in the Tour de France last year a gifted climber indeed being chased all the way up here Nelson Rodriguez and the rider in yellow Stefano Faustini they're not too far behind Buenahora they should get together on the descent and there's a revitalized Gianni Bunyo while the Mape boys uh, pick up the newspapers not to read of course but to push up the jumpers ready for the descent and that cold wind Ugramov takes uh, a little bit of reading material as well the way down off the Garvia cautious descent this by the Colombian certainly not a man in a hurry he's taken the king of the mountains points but uh, Piccoli already well clear in that competition there's Berzin third in line of the group the pink jersey of Abraham Alano sitting off the back of this big group the scenery today undoubtedly is stunning but his concentration must not come be relinquished at all because on these descents which are very very dangerous in the Dolomites as you can see you have to keep your full wits about you. Buenahora still leading down here. Rodriguez sitting at the back, the little man who once uh, beat Pyotr Ugrimov in the Alps uh, to a stage win in the Tour de France after sitting on Ugrimov all the way to the line. He outsprinted him. Rodolfo Massi trapped in between this group and trying to get across as he was the other day. And he might well get across because the main field behind are concentrating on the in-house battle for the final destination of the Maglia Rosa. It should be decided today for the final ride into the finish tomorrow. There is Massey 30 seconds down. The group containing Abraham Alano and Tonkov is at almost two minutes at the moment. And Massey back up now with the leaders. So we've got four of them. Buena Horner, Faustini, Rodriguez and Massey. Well, any one of these rides looks so Massey there is a little bit worn out after the chase. He's had one stage win and has put in some good rides in the mountains this last couple of days. 
latched onto the back, which is 44 kilometers to go of this long stage, but now we're beginning the climb of the Mortarolo. This is without doubt the steepest climb in this year's Giro d'Italia with slopes of one in five, some 20% gradients. It goes up for 13 kilometers and Ugrimov is the first to start trying to break up this elite group. Ivan Gotti also setting the pace, Ugrimov just behind him. Then Zaina, what can you say about him? He continues to look good. Pavel Tonkov, not the one in the pink jersey anymore, but the one in the pink of Panaria. And it looked to me as though Alano was in a bit of trouble at the back there, and he was. Abraham Alano has lost ground here, and we're only on the start of this long climb. And if Tonkov cares to look over his shoulder, he could hurt him more. It was the acceleration of Ivan Gotti that put him in trouble. This looks as though Rodriguez being picked up now by the group. Ugrimov, Zaina. And Rodriguez making no effort at all to latch on the back. He's going to very shortly be passed then by Abraham Olano, who is losing ground rapidly. They're all coming back now. Massey is also coming back. So Faustini and Buena Hora are still just in front. Olano climbs past Nelson Rodriguez, who has no more fight left in him. The same may not be said of the pink jersey. Equal on time with Tonkov, so now he's down in the second place in this year's Giro. What a marvellous tailpiece this has been. Here are the other two attackers of the day, Bueno Hora and Faustini, being picked up now by a group inspired by the loss of Abraham Olano. And it was a long stare back there by Bueno Hora, and he was probably looking to see if the pink jersey was present, and he was certainly not. 27 seconds the gap now to Tonkov and Olano. That's enough to win this year's Giro for him. But he must watch out now for the resurgence of Zaina, who with a good ride today could well move up into the overall lead. There he is on the left of our picture. Ugramov has had an excellent race, always been in the action when it matters. Perhaps the final killer strength leaving him a little bit as he gets older. Uh, Tonkov, of course, the same can't be said of this man, who's now coming very much into his own. Having had a love affair with the Giro d'Italia for a number of years, and Gotti too, never having yet won a race as a professional, but he climbed up there into second place yesterday. He's going to be in at the kill again, it seems, today, as he starts the attacks once more. Gets rid of the breakaways who just came back to him. Uh, Tonkov certainly knows the wheel to follow. Jumped immediately into the strip sleam, uh, strip sleam here of uh, Gotti. Gotti looks over his shoulder just to see if Konkov wants to come through and do any work and I don't think he can at the minute. What a nice feeling it must be though for Tonkov knowing he is pulling away uh, from Abraham Olano. The Spanish rider seems to have cracked wholesalely on the climb. Zaina may be in a little bit of trouble too here as he rides alongside Ugrimov. Massive crowd again on the Mortarolo to watch the riders touring the Dolomites. And this will probably be remembered as one of the hardest stages in recent years in the Giro d'Italia. Two riders in front. The man trying to recover the pink jersey is held for a lot of this year's tour. Ivan Gotti trying to win a stage at last, having taken second place yesterday. Gotti turned pro back in 1991, by the way. 30 seconds, but more importantly, it's a minute 10 now, uh, between a uh, 1 minute 40 rather, between Tonkov and Gotti and Alano. And that's more than enough for the pink jersey to return to the shoulders of the Russian. Ivan Gotti, content to ride at the front, and very often that's the way with climbers. And look at this, a salute to the crowd here from Tonkov, at least I think it was a salute, but he's certainly emphasizing the fact that he is now clear of Abraham. I think he was waving at the Spanish supporters there to saying, I, well, I've dropped him and it's going to be my tour now. As they go over the top of the Mortarolo, Gotti wants the crowd out of his way so he can see the descent. 35 seconds pass by. Ugramov comes over with Zaina. No sign yet of Abraham Alano. It's going to be over a minute, I think. The descent of the Mortarolo has begun. 
And what a great feeling it must be for Tonkov now in company with Ivan Gotti. Surely if he gets to the finish, Tonkov is not going to deny Gotti his first ever win as a pro bike rider. Two minutes and 22 seconds. The cheers and the waves are a little bit meek there for the world champion, Abraham Olano, because surely now he has lost the Giro d'Italia. And Gotti taking no chances on the descent as Tonkov gets control of the reins. Just on 50 kilometers an hour, around right about 30 miles an hour for the way down. There's no real hills left in this year's Giro d'Italia now. It's a slightly uphill finish. The Gaywiz teammates, uh, Berzi and the big loser again, almost 10 minutes down at the top of the Mortarolo for Berzin. So after yesterday's blowout, uh, clearly today he's decided to call it quits. The pink jersey of Abraham Olano. Well, he would have to take some extreme risk on the descent now, dangerous as they are, if he was going to put himself back in contention, but I really believe he knows now he's lost this year's Giro d'Italia. Second in the Tour of Spain. A high finish, but not the winning position, is going to have to be his lot this time around in the Tour of Italy. Back up with the two leaders, and still Gotti dangles off the back of Tonkov. They've got 47 seconds over the Zaina Ugrimov tandem. So they're more or less locked at the same time gap. Gotti not clearly the careless descender of Tonkov, having to make up ground when the road permits. This is the other two behind at round about 47 seconds. And Zaina doing himself a no disservice at all here by this another great escape because he is going to continue his ascent up the overall classification. He's gaining time on Olano. Ugrimov is already behind him overall. He'll have to watch out for the escape of Gotti, but you know, realistically, Zaina could be looking at second place overall by the end of today. That's a tremendous performance by him. Two great days in the mountains. Well, the gradient, not, uh, not too much to worry about now. And Tonkov, almost a smile on his face there, but the gap is coming down. It's only 30 seconds, Aina Ugrimov. And that will confirm Zaina's ascent to possibly the runner-up slot overall. Off the mountains too for the pink jersey, but off his shoulders will come the Maglia Rosa. There's no doubt about that now. He's dangling some two and a half minutes back. Tonkov having made the running down the descent at 10 kilometers to go, quite happy once again to sit on the back wheel of Ivan Gotti. 27 years of age, uh, Gotti, a turn professional back in 1991. And young Alano, a rider who won so well the World Road Race Championship on an enormously difficult course in Doitama in Colombia. Now finding he's been pushed into the back of the Giro d'Italia by an inspired climb, largely by Gotti, but certainly Tonkov had to really suffer to hold his wheel, and he did just that. The flotilla of team cars around the Maya Rosa and world champion. Only five kilometers left to go now, and Tonkov knows with every turn of those pedal revs, he is going to ride back into the pink jersey. Ivan Gotti is going to climb higher up the overall classification. Tonkov, who won three stages in Italy of the Settimana Bergamasca this year, and also a stage of the Tour of Romandy, now set to win the biggest race of his career at 27. He turned pro, in fact, a year later than Ivan Gotti. This is the face of a man who always suffers and always gets good results, Pyotr Ugrimov. Well, by his own admission, Alano says he's not a great mountain climber, but these last two days he's hung in there pretty well. But there is just one mountain too far. The Col de Mortarolo has cracked him. Tonkov, followed by Gotti. Inside the last couple of kilometers to the finishing line now. You can almost see the smirk on the face of Pavel Tonkov. 
and the gap has gone up again so he's had a good last few kilometers a minute eight now to the other two and a minute 55 to Alano Alano himself is closing in so he's not giving up at all he's closing in but it's not going to come soon enough to save that pink jersey and tomorrow should be a formality for Tonkov if all goes according to plan on the road into Milan Tonkov set now to become only the second Russian rider ever to win the Giro Evgeny Berzin said before the start of this race that a Russian rider would win the event but I think he was implying himself rather than Tonkov and it's not to be in fact it's a gay with his teammate Ivan Gotti who's had his day here today almost eight hours so they spent the best part of 15 hours cycling in the Dolomites these past two days in this viciously cruel tailpiece and the man who's going to get his first ever pro win is sprinting clear. There'll be no resistance from, from Tonkov. He will give this to Ivan Gotti. It was Gotti's attack that did all of the damage on the climb of the Mortarolo. And now Ivan Gotti, having turned professional in 19 at 91, gets his first ever pro win. A yellow jersey in the Tour de France by a day. Now a stage winner in the Giro. A two-arm salute from him. A two-arm salute from Pavel Tonkov, who knows now, barring accidents, he has won the Giro d'Italia. This is the race for third place. Pyotr Ugrimov and Enrico Zaina. Zaina himself, if it all works out now, could be second overall tonight. And that will give him second in Milan tomorrow. And Ugrimov, who's done so much of the work. I wonder if Zaina is going to allow Pyotr. He is. He gets the third place almost a minute back. And then comes Zaina. And now in fifth place. And what a fight back too, because he has closed in that little bit. The pink jersey of... Abraham Alano he knows he's lost it now look at the gap it really widened in fact over those last uh, three kilometers it's going out to two minutes plus and almost three minutes now so Abraham Alano has lost and lost in a big way today in this second stage in the Dolomites while Tonkov is watching as he crosses the line 252 down and out of the top two certainly overall and there we are, a no-handed ride here for Pavel Tonkov, straightened himself up for the victory. No resistance either when Ivan Gotti's gone clear. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if Tonkov hadn't have indicated to Gotti that the stage win was his a long way down the road in appreciation of what he's done today. And that's the way it works in professional racing. One guy gets the stage win, the other one gets the overall victory. Two rivals on the day and two friends as well. And this is the second man getting ready for the two-arm salute. The last time I recall this happening was in Barcelona for the Olympic Games when the three medalists all did two-arm salutes. And of course the winner then, the late Fabio Casatelli. So for the Panaria man, Pavel Tonkov, these are happy moments indeed. For Ivan Gotti, after all of those years of trying, he gets the stage win. But overall, look at this. Uh, Tonkov now leading Enrico Zaina by 2.43. Alano still hoping for a place on the podium is third. Ugrimov, three seconds back, is fourth. All smiles for Pavel Tonkov. He must have thought he lost it after the time trial and the day in the mountains, but he's got it back now. And so to Milano and the finish of the 79th Giro d'Italia, 176 kilometres from Sondrio taking the riders down to Sempioni Park in the heart of Milan. And no contours of course to worry the riders, it's all downhill now for the finishers and as we join the action in the park it is the final lap and the race is more or less all together but of course there are those who think they can win and they're on the attack. And one of the riders here trying to push home is Andrei Titeriuk, once a stage winner of the Kellogg's Tour of Britain in Coventry, in Great Britain. And by the way, we see Saiko here at the front, but Mario Cipollini certain not to win the stage today because he didn't start in the time trial a few days ago. He'll be off uh, preparing now for the Tour de France, his next big event, and then the Olympic Games. His little breakaway, getting clear of the field. You can bet your life that Pavel Tonkov will have no interest in it at all. Teteriuk is in this move too, so too is Sergei Uchikov, a little Russian guy. And the Roslotto rider there is Sivakov, and the other man is Nikola Loda. And so as they start the sprint for the line here, it looks to me as though Uchikov is going to come through in the centre of the picture. There's five of them in the hat for the victory. 
and a uh, sprint on the right by Teteriuk. He's on our left now as you look, but it's all too late. Uchikov gets it right on the line, and he finished just in front of the Roslotto rider Sivakov, and that's the best place he's ever had in a big international stage race. And barely a few seconds have passed by. The sprint from the main field for sixth place, and it looks as though at last Adriano Baffi just getting through and getting a sprint win. Well, sort of anyway. He was 17 seconds off the pace today. Uchikov of Russia getting the victory, a stage winner. You may remember he beat Lance Armstrong a few uh, last year. It was in a stage at Revel in the Tour de France. Overall, the final result. Pavel Tonkov becomes the second Russian to win the Giro d'Italia by 2 minutes and 43 seconds over Zaina. The favourite, Abraham Olano, in the end, had to be content with third place. He couldn't handle the Dolomites. But he walks up, immediately congratulates Pavel Tonkov. This has been a great tour, and those last four days, well, they were full of suspense. I hope you've enjoyed it, and until the next time, goodbye.